Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thought for Thursday. I hope that we're all doing good this evening on Friday Eve, as I like to call it. I'm happy to uh, be here with you this evening for week two of Unlocking Your Genius. Running just a little behind schedule, but nevertheless, I am here. I just got us going over here on, um, I think I got us going. Yeah, checking our connection over here on Instagram. Uh, that doesn't look right. Sorry. I think that's okay. All right. Anyway, I'm glad to be here. Glad to have you join in. I'll give us just another second. I won't be too long, like I said, because I'm late. But welcome. Welcome, guys, to week two. And thank you for taking this time to be sure to take a little time for yourself and, and work on personal development, huh? So we're in week two. Like I said, we're talking about the importance of identifying our strengths. And tonight we start in with the tools and the tips for doing just that. Thank you for coming on in here on Instagram. Welcome, welcome. I'm happy to have you. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to get started on the tips tonight. And I, at the end of this, will give you a link so that you can download a worksheet that will go along with what we're talking about. All right. So we've already talked last week about all of the benefits of identifying your strengths uh, and how frequently we really kind of overlook them, right? Because maybe it's something that we do pretty easily. Um, it comes natural to us and we don't really see the benefit of actually going in and making sure that we understand those strengths and that we're using them in the best way possible. Sometimes we figure, oh, I'm just good at this and, and that's that. However, working within our strengths and utilizing them appropriately really does help you to enjoy what it is that you're doing more, particularly if we're talking about a career, and just in your personal life as well. Nobody really likes to do things that they're not good at, right? I mean, maybe it's something that you want to get stronger in, and that's definitely something you can do. You can develop a strength, but it's very important to understand what they are and to try and structure activities that definitely entail what you are best at, okay? So tonight we're going again to talk about how you can identify your strengths. And one way in which you can do that is by identifying what your passions are. Your passions usually are a direct connection to something that you're strong in, something that is a strength for you. Because if you really enjoy something, you really like doing something, you really like uh, being a part of something, chances are you're pretty good at that. Um, and it's a strength of yours. So you want to take a look at what some of your passions are, and that'll help you to determine where your strengths lie, all right? So there's some questions that you can even ask yourself when you're trying to figure out, you know, well, what are my passions? Sometimes we don't really quite know how to identify those. So what are some questions that we can ask that will help us to do just that, to identify what our passions are? First question is, what is it that you would do for free? If you got paid absolutely nothing to do something, and I'm sure this is, is such a common question when we talk about passions, but it really is a good indication. What is it that you would do that you would do even if you did not get paid for it? Where is it you would work even if you did not get paid for it? That's a, you didn't need you know the funds from working that job. What is it that you would do or you had a way of, of taking care of yourself is really what I'm meaning to say. What is it that you would do, you know, if you had to do, if you could do it for absolutely free? What is it that you would do? That's a good indication of where one of your passions may lay. What gets you the most excited? What is it that you really are excited about? 
I know with me, I enjoy working with children. I enjoy mentoring younger women. It's something that I really do have. Um, I feel that I have a call in doing because it's passionate and something that is really close to my heart. What are some of the things in your life that you can identify like that, that really get you excited when you think about them or get you excited when you go to, um, when you go to do them or when you have an opportunity to mentor someone, for example, like I do? Something else you can ask yourself, what do you care the most about? What is it that really goes all the way up on your ladder when it comes to something that you are concerned and caring about? Concern may be a little different from caring. Um, you know, when you say that you care about something, I frequently think of people who, for example, love animals, people who love to help those who are underprivileged or need some type of support. What is it that really touches or pulls at your heartstrings that you really, really care about? That's something else that gives you an indication of where your passions may lay. What else? What activities are you totally immersed in? What is immersive for me as far as my activities go? What Do you love to play basketball? Do you love to coach basketball? Do you love to paint? Do you love to make jewelry? Something my mother and I thoroughly enjoy doing. What is it that you are totally immersed in? that may point to passions for you. Again, if you could do anything at all, what would that be? And that sounds a little like, you know, if you could do anything that you didn't get paid for. But if you just had free reign in the world to do whatever it is that you desire to do, you didn't have to worry about, um, you know, having to report to anyone or having to look out for anyone or you can kind of throw responsibility to the wind a little bit. Do anything that you wanted to do. What would that be? Another indication of a passion for you. And the last thing that I have here, what do you think about the most? What is it that you think about the most? I know when I've asked this question for clients in the past, something that I've heard of, well, you know, I think about my kids all the time, you know, wanting to make sure that they're taken care of and they're getting the best education. Yeah, well, chances are you're pretty passionate about your kids. You're passionate about, you know, people in your family, things that you do for the people in your family. But outside of things like that, what are you passionate about? What is it that you really, really care? Again, it points back to caring about. What is it? That points to another um, arena where there's a passion. So those are the questions, you know, what would you do for free? What do you get excited about? What do you care about the most? What would you do if you could do absolutely anything in the world? Um, and this one, what do you think about the most? Those are all very good questions in helping you to understand where your passions are. So write them down and answer them. Take the time to work your way through them. Um, try to get to the core of what makes you tick. What is it? That's what we're trying to get to when we're talking about your strengths here, right? What is it that makes you tick? All right. There's a second step in identifying your strengths. And I apologize if I'm moving a little quickly here. I'm trying to honor our 15 minutes. But if you need to go back and watch this, it's going to be on the on Facebook, it's going to be over on LinkedIn, it's going to be over on Instagram. So you can definitely watch the replays. The second step in helping you to identify what your strengths are is ask others for their input. Yeah, ask other people what they think. Chances are they may be able to point to something that you may have never even thought of. Now, you may not want to just walk up to them and say, hey, what are my strengths? What do you think my strengths are? You know, you may want to give them more pointed questions so that they will be, you will be able to kind of lead them 
to give you specifics around what it is that you're truly desiring to find out so that they will get, you know, again, very precise in what it is they're trying to relay to you. And that will help you in determining just how much this may be pointing in the direction of a passion for you. Okay. So what are some of the questions you may want to ask people? Remember, again, you know, these could be blind spots for you, things that you don't see, but they very well may see it because they're on the outside and they're witnessing some of the things that you're doing and seeing how you react and how you respond to certain things. So there's some questions you can ask them. Number one, just simply, you know, what am I best at? What do you think I do the best? You've been working with me. You've been around me. I mean, You've been my cousin for all my life, you know, whomever it is that you're asking. If you want to ask family, friends, people that you work with, what do you feel I'm best at? Another question is, what do you appreciate about me? That's a great question. What is it that you appreciate about me? Um, answers that I've heard from people in the past is that people really appreciate how I have a listening ear how I'm great at um, listening, how I'm, you know, really good at being able to organize things. I get that one. I hear that one a lot. They will be able to tell you if they interact with you on a regular, what is it about you that they really appreciate? All right. That may help you in identifying a passion. Something else when do you think you're doing your best work? So ask them, when is it do you think I'm doing my best work? All right. What do you think I'm really, really, when you see me doing things, I do a lot of things, right? Particularly, let's take, for instance, you're talking to somebody at work. You may manipulate 50 million tasks a day. Ask them, out of everything I do, what do you think I do the best? When am I doing my best work? When is it that I'm actually operating in my best? Again, another question that will help you in determining if there's a passion there. Something else, what sets me apart from the others? Mm. So how am I different? You know, you know what, sets, what makes me a little different? How am I unique to you? What sets me apart from, you know, some other people in my family, some other people that, you know, we work with? You know, what What do you feel sets me apart? Another real good indication, another real good question about what in particular may be a passion of yours. So again, getting input from somebody else is definitely an excellent way of helping to identify some blind spots that you may not see, all right, because it's you but someone else who observes you on a regular and tell them to be honest. You know, you want people to be honest with you and not just give you answers because they want to be nice. Tell them that you really, really need their honest opinion because this is helping you in working on some things that you've been doing for personal development and you really need some constructive, um, you just really need some good input, all right? and you're counting on them to give it to you. And hearing their input, it's going to help you to get it's going to help you to get a true sense of your strengths. And it can give you a more accurate picture of yourself than you can get on your own. Cuz again, some of these things they just might be blind spots for you and you may not see them on your own. All right? So I'm going to give you one more tonight as we're approaching our 15-minute time limit. And that is Another way to determine what your strengths are is to evaluate the requests that you regularly receive. What do people frequently ask you to do? How do they frequently ask you to provide support on something? Uh, they may frequently ask you to cook something, all right? And we're taking it outside of the work environment. They may frequently ask you to help them to work on volunteer programs that they have. Um, and they have them on a regular basis and they frequently ask you to help out with them. All right. Again, pointing 
you in the direction of something that they feel that you're probably good at. Because think about it. People are not going to ask you to do something frequently if they don't really feel that you're good at it or that you are adding some value to whatever it is that they're asking you to do, right? If you're really bad at doing something, they're not going to keep asking you to do that thing over and over again uh, to support what it is that they're doing. Who wants you know, something to reflect poorly on any activity or event or anything at all that they're trying to do. Um, it means, number one, chances are you have the necessary skills to get whatever that is done. That's the first thing they're looking at. You have the necessary skills and you're good at doing it. So those are some of the things that you want to know. Because again, they're going to help you to identify strengths that you may not even see. All right. So that's it for tonight. We got our first three, our first three, all right, steps in helping us to identify our strengths and helping us to unlock our genius. Now, what I want you to do is... If you want the worksheet that goes along with this, I have a URL that you can go to where you can download this worksheet. And I'll be sure to include this in the comment section on all of the platforms where this is playing here. So you can go on over and get a worksheet to start working through some of these things that I talked about tonight and that I talked about last week. All right. So you'll be able to go here, download the worksheet, and do those questions. You can do them ahead of time because some of them are on there that I'll be talking about in the weeks to come. But we are starting this year and I'm dedicating Thought for Thursday to helping us to develop personally. I always talk about topics, but we're going to take some action this year on Thought for Thursday. We're going to take some real initiative in getting you going in the direction that you need to go to get the things that you want to get. You know, those promises that you made to yourself that you were going to go after and achieve this year. These are all things that are going to help you in that process. All right. You need to know your strengths. You need to know, um, of course, what you're good at. You need to, in the weeks to come, we'll talk about making sure that you understand you have the correct mindset that you need to go forward. Um, a number of things. Great, Tanya. I'm glad that you do. Thanks so much for being here. Just a number of things that you need to do. All right. I'm going to give them to you here in 15 minutes a week. Now you'll do some homework, of course, but in 15 minutes a week, you'll be able to get access to some of these things and do some real work, put some real meat on the bones. All right to make sure that you're getting what it is that you need and what it is that is going to help you to progress. All right, that's it for tonight, guys. Thanks so much. Again, I put the link up here. I'll be sure to include it in the comment section on all of these platforms. You guys go out, have a great night, all right? Be yourself. Remember that you are awesome just the way you are, fearfully and wonderfully made by the master with your imprint that can make a difference, that imprint that he gave just to you. Nobody else has it. Go out and put that imprint on something and make a difference. Be confident in who you are, knowing that you are the best out there, all right? And you have a lot to offer. All right, guys, good night. Thanks again. Don't forget to get your worksheet. <laughs>